Hello, hello, welcome back. We've covered the law of sines, and our topic tonight is the law of cosines. So we want you to copy this down carefully. If a problem refers to three sides and one angle, we are going to use the law of cosines. Now, off to the side on the right here, here's an example of what the law of cosines looks like. Now, I've written three of them down, and if you recall, there was three pieces to the law of sines, and basically, you're just using one of these formulas. Um, they're all the same formula, except you'll notice this one starts with C and ends with C. This one starts with B, ends with B, starts with A, ends with A. So basically, we want to get one idea down here. Now, what we do want you to put in your book is we want you to notice that they have to begin and end with the same variable. Okay, we have to begin and end with the same variable. That's a key to this. Um, and the other little piece is basically what you're looking for is either going to be first or last. Okay, so that's the key to using the law of cosines is in the formula memorizing the beginning and end start with the same. So if I start with A, I end with A, and notice that means I'm using B and C in the middle and B and C again. If I start with B, I end with B, and that means I'm using A and C in the middle and A and C here. And same with the C. If I start and end with C, that means I better be using A and B and A and B in the middle. So you begin and end with the same variable, and what you're looking for has to come first or last. So let's dive in. In triangle ABC, side B equals 12, Side C equals 20, measure of angle A equals 45. Find side A to the nearest integer. So of course we want to sketch just like we did with the law of sines. A, B, C, remember capital letters are the angles. Side B, which of course is across from angle B, is 12. Side C, which is across from angle C, is 20. Measure of angle A is 45. So now you always ask yourself, do I have law of sines or law of cosines? And I just want to put a little reminder for sines. Sines was you always had the two opposites. That's how you keep them straight. If you have opposites, you have sine. So for example, if I know side B, or side B, that means I would want to be finding angle B. I want the ones across. Angle A, side A. And I don't have enough information for that, so it's not law of sines. The key is I have side, angle, side. So side, angle, side is telling me law of cosines. Okay, side, angle, side. Two sides and an angle, law of cosines. All right, so what I'm finding then is side A. So that means the formula I'm going to choose out of the three is the one with A in it. I'm going to start with A because that's what I'm finding. A squared equals. Now you can't use A again because it comes first and last. That means I'm left with B and C. B squared plus C squared minus 2 times those same two letters, B, C. Now it's a law of cosine, so we're going to say cosine of angle A. So by the time we do it a bunch of times, it'll make more sense to you. But again, what you're finding comes first. That letter's got to be the same on the end. Okay. The two other letters in the middle, you're adding them minus two times those same two letters. Once you have the formula down, it's pretty straightforward from there. I'm finding side A, so I'm going to leave that as A squared. Um, side B is 12 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 12 times 20. And of course, the cosine of 45. Now, What's extremely nice at the moment, and it won't be this way for every problem, but you'll notice all of this, those are just a bunch of numbers, and my variable is already by itself. So all I have to do is type this in all on one line. Okay, so on your calculator, all on one line, don't do it in separate steps. You are just typing this whole side in your calculator. And of course you're going to get some ugly number. I've got 204.5887, etc. And you'll notice that didn't get me A, that got me A squared. So what I do is I store this into, I'm just going to pick alpha, I don't know, D I guess, because I'm already using A, B, and C. So I'm storing that number in alpha D, and I'm saying to get rid of this square, well I just have to take the square root of both sides. 
So square root this side, square root this side, those cancel. And I've got A equals, and in my calculator, the square root of that number is 14.303, blah, blah, blah. And if I just scroll back up, oh, it did say to the nearest integer, so I'm looking for side A to equal 14. And you've done it. That's our law of cosines. Let's try another one. Number two, a triangular walking course, which of course is very normal, has two sides of 230 feet and 360 feet. And the angle between these sides measures 38 degrees. Find the length of the third side of the course to the nearest foot. So of course I'm going to start with a quick sketch. They told me two of the sides, so 230 feet, 360 feet, and it said the angle between them measures 38 degrees. Find the length of the third side, which of course is here, to the nearest foot. Now you'll notice that they don't have A, B, and C labeled, they don't have any sides labeled, so I'm just going to go ahead and label them myself, A, B, and C. All right, and I want you to make a note in your book there what you're finding comes first. That's the whole key, what you're finding comes first. So in this case, after I've labeled them, I'm finding this side, which is across from B, so that means I'm finding B. So I start my formula with B. So B squared equals. Now remember, what you're finding comes first, and it's going to end with B also. That means use the other two letters in the middle. A squared plus C squared minus 2, same two letters, AC, and then it's cosines because it's the law of cosine B. What you're finding comes first, same last letter, all the other letters go in the middle. And now again, once you've identified that formula, just a little plug and chug here. So I don't know my B squared, I'm going to call that X squared equals 360 squared plus 230 squared minus 2 times 360 230, I'm going to squeeze that last one in there, cosine of 38. Now again, this is a really nice problem at the moment because x is already by itself, and all of this junk on this side is a number. So that means straight to the calculator. I got a pretty large number, 52,005.41, etc. Remember, I'm going to store that into something. So I'm going to store it into my d and then take the square root of both sides. And I've got the other side to equal 228 to the nearest foot. And you know, just make sure, make sure your answer makes sense. If you got like 10 for an answer, would it make sense to have a 230, 360, then a 10, length of 10? I think not. So just make sure your answer makes sense in the problem. In our next example, you're gonna start to see that we do deal with a little bit of geometry this year particularly besides the triangles, parallelograms, and rhombuses. So in example three, we'll just start with a review of a parallelogram. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch it out. Remember, it's like a rectangle, so we'll make a little note there, that's kind of tilted. Okay. And it's important that you say rectangle instead of a square because these two sides are equal, and then these two sides are equal, and that's our key for our parallelogram. Now, I'm going to keep talking about some properties, so are the opposites. This angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle. So in this example, in a parallelogram, the adjacent, which we know from our trig means next to, sides next to each other, measure 40 and 22 centimeters. And I'm just going to use common sense. I'm going to label my larger one 40, my smaller one 22. If the larger angle of the parallelogram measures 116 degrees. So again, use common sense. Which angle looks bigger in your picture? I would say this one looks larger, the obtuse angle. Okay, so this is obtuse again, so I'm just giving some facts out there. This is acute, less than 90. Find the length of the larger diagonal. Now, I think you can picture drawing two diagonals in, one this way and one this way. So let me draw that again. Does one look longer than the other? Hopefully you're saying yes, and they want the larger one, so that's this one. And I'm going to put my X on that. Now, it looks a little messy at the moment, but I just want to remind you that we have a parallelogram. So if I know this side is 40, I actually also know this side up here. So I'm going to list my 40 here as well. Now, I think you would agree that a parallelogram is just simply made up of two triangles. So I'm basically going to take this top triangle, and I'm just going to redraw it for myself, and maybe that'll help you see it better. 
And if you can see it, that's great. But again, I just want to redraw it to help those of you that can't. So I know this side is 22. I know this side is 40. Um, they said this angle, the larger angle is 116, and they wanted this larger diagonal. Okay, so you can see that we have a triangle. We have side, angle, side. All right, so that's my hint that it's law of cosines again. And, you know, if you're ever unsure, start with sines. Remember, sines has to have the side and the angle across, so that works. But you have this side, and you don't have either angle across, so you can't use sines. You've got to go cosines. All right, so again, label your sides if they don't have them. I'm just going to go A, B, C. And what you're finding comes first. That's the key. What you're finding comes first. I'm finding this side, which across in my picture is B. So I'm starting with B again. B squared equals. You start and end with the same letter. Use the other two. A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. And again, just a little plug and chug. So I've got B squared equals, let's see, my A squared is 40 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 40 times 22 plus 116. I get a B squared of 28.55 point blah, 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 blah. I'm storing that into D. Square root both sides. And to the nearest integer, I get B equals 53. And there you have it. And again, the only reason I could type that in is because this variable is already by itself. All right, in our next example, we've talked parallelogram. Now let's kind of review rhombus. A rhombus is more like a square, you'll remember, from geometry. And this time all the sides are equal, so it's kind of like a square that got tilted. So we'll just make that picture and mark all those sides equal. And it says, in a rhombus whose side measures 22, and they only have to tell you one because, again, they're all equal. The smaller angle is 55. So just like in the parallelogram, you'll have one obtuse angle, one that looks large, and one that looks small. So 55 is clearly acute, so make sure you put that in the acute angle spot. It says find the length of the larger diagonal. Well, again, picture drawing these two diagonals in. Which one's larger? And I think it should be obvious, if it's not, the larger side is across from the larger angle. So this one's angle is clearly larger, I would be finding this diagonal. So again, I'm just going to pull it out so maybe it's easier to see. I know this side's 22, 22. It said find the larger side. And now, do we know any angles? Well, remember, this angle was 55, and let's review a little bit of geometry again. If you have an acute plus an obtuse, they should add up to 180. Okay, so if this angle here is 55 plus this obtuse angle up top, that should total 180. So to get that obtuse angle, I just need to take 180 and subtract 55. And I should get x equals 125. Now I'm ready to attack this problem. So just quickly ask yourself, do you have law of sines or law of cosines? Remember, if you have opposites, you're sines. Well, I have this angle on the side opposite, so I'm kind of leaning towards sines, but I have this side, and I don't know this angle, and I have this side, and I don't know this angle, so it can't be sines. Again, you'll notice you have side, angle, side, side, angle, side, which is law of cosines. So again, I'm just going to throw some letters on here. I'm going to start A, B, C, and I'm going to choose a formula to go with. So finding comes first. That's the whole key, but your finding comes first finding this side, which is across in my picture from letter A. So when I write my formula, I'm going to start and end with A. A squared equals, choose your other two letters, B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. Start and end with the same letter. And again, just plug and jug, we're finding A squared. So I've got 22 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 22 times 22 times the cosine of 125. And again, you'll notice that the variable is by itself, so you could just type all that junk in the calculator.
And whoops, that is not the answer I got. I've got a squared equals one five two three point blah 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 blah. Remember to take the square root of both sides. And a equals thirty nine. In our last example here, uh, we want to find all the missing sides and angles. So you'll take a look at this picture. What's really nice is that they gave us two angles, and we can easily go get that third angle. Remember, all three angles add up to 180. So if I take 50 plus 35, that's a total of 85. And if I take my 180 and subtract 85, I should get 95. So I've easily found the third angle. Okay, now I've got to get sides B and side C, and you just have to do one at a time. Now remember, law of cosines means you have side angle side. Well, I have side, and I have an angle, but I don't have any other side, so I don't actually have law, law of cosines or side angle side. I think we've got opposites. And when you have opposites, remember that's the law of sines. So they are going to be interchanged on you, and you just got to pay attention to what you have. So opposites again, I know 50, and I know the side opposite is 12. I know 95, and I can easily get the opposite side. So let's review law of sines. I'm going to say it's the sine of C over C equals the sine of A over A. Remember, the angle goes with the sine function. So the sine of 50 is opposite side 12, and the sine of 95 is opposite side C. Quick cross multiply, I've got C sine of 50 equals 12 sine of 95, divide by the sine of 50, and I get C equals 15.6 or 16 to the nearest whole number. So that gets me side C, so I can label that in my picture. And if I scroll back, I need to go get side B right now. So I'm going to still use the given fact, and this is just one option. I could go law of sines a second time. I could use 50 and 12, and then I could use B and 35. I could do law of sines again, and I think that's what I'll do. I like the law of sines, so I'm going to prefer that one over cosines any day. So I'm going to say the sine of B over B equals the sine of A over A. And again, just plug them in. Uh, sine of 35 is across from B. And the sine of 50 is across from 12. Cross multiply. 12 sine 35 equals B sine 50. Divide out my sine 50. I get B equals 8.9 or b equals 9. Well, there you have it with the law of cosines and a little bit of review of the law of sines. So just to keep the two straight real quickly, you're going to use sines if you have opposites. That's the key. Sides and the angle opposites. You're going to use cosines when you have side, angle, side. Well, we look forward to answering any questions in class tomorrow. Have a great night.